Hello students, uh, this lecture is going to focus on exercise 11, um, which is all about the joints of the body, what we call our articulations, um, and how that affects um, how the body can move. Um, so now we're not looking at just the, the skeleton, but kind of how the skeleton fits together really. Um, and you're actually looking at the shoulder joint here, or at least a model of the shoulder joint, um, which you'll get a chance to look at in lab. Um, so to start, we just have to go for a regular definition, right, um, of an articulation or a joint. And when we talk about articulations and joints, what we're really talking about is the connections between the bones. So now that you know all the different bones, now we're going to specifically look at how all the puzzle pieces essentially fit together. Um, our joints have really two functions. Of course, they do hold the skeleton together, um, but they also allow the skeleton to have a little bit more flexibility, right? If we didn't have any joints, if the bones were just glued together, um, then we'd be really stiff and not be able to move around like we can move. But because we have um, joints of kind of various types, um, we are able to move and walk and talk and do all the wonderful things um, in terms of movement that our body can do. Um, we're going to start with kind of how we classify joints um, and usually when we classify joints we're looking at um, either the structure of the joint, what it's composed of, or kind of the, the functionality of the joint, meaning what is its range of motion? Does it move a lot? Does it move not at all? Et cetera, et cetera. Um, in terms of structural classification, joints fall into one of three categories, either a fibrous joint, a cartilaginous joint or a synovial joint. In terms of functional classifications, we have joints that are synarthrotic or synarthroses is the, the noun version of that. And these are joints that are immovable, meaning they're not really, they're, the, the bones are held really tightly together and they're not really moving a whole lot. We also have amphiarthrotic joints or amphiarthroses. Um, these are slightly movable joints, so they've got a little bit of give to them, but they're still not moving a whole lot. And then lastly, we have diarthrotic joints or diarthroses, and these are the joints that are most freely movable. Um, so we're going to look at the fibrous joints and cartilaginous joints first, um, and then we'll spend most of the time talking about synovial joints, um, since that's most of the joints in our body. But if we look at our fibrous and cartilaginous joints, um, the fibrous joints, shockingly enough, are connected by fibrous tissue. Um, never would have guessed with a name like fibrous, right? Um, they have just these tiny little connections between them. Um, most of the, or actually nearly all of the fibrous joints are synarthrotic, meaning they are immovable. They're not really moving a whole lot. Um, so whether that's the sutures between our cranial bones, um, the syndesmoses down here um, between the distal tib fib connection. Again, fibrous joints have this just little bit of like connective tissue between them. And then uh, not pictured here um, is the gomphoses, which is actually your teeth in your socket. Um, so you have gomphoses both in the maxilla and the uh, mandible where, where you have all your teeth. And unfortunately, it's not pictured here in this image. Um, in terms of the cartilaginous joints, um, what do you think they're composed of? Well, if you said cartilage, you would be correct. Um, never would have guessed with a name like cartilaginous, right? Um, I love when AMP names things really obvious like that. Uh, most of the cartilaginous joints are amphiarthrotic, meaning they've got a little bit of give, um, but they're still not really um, with a wide range of motion. And there are two types of cartilaginous joints. We have symphyses, wherein um, we have fibrocartilage between the ends of the bone, and we have synchondroses, um, where we have hyaline cartilage uh, between the ends of the bones. Um, so if we look at the first rib and the sternum, um, that's a synchondrosis. Um, all of our uh, long bones, when they're growing, um, that epiphyseal plate between the diaphysis and the epiphysis, that's also a synchondrosis um, until you've reached your full height and then the, the cartilage plate goes away and um, then it's no longer a joint because the bone just completely fuses. Um, in terms of symphyses, um, all of the intervertebral discs, all of the joints between the body of the vertebrae, um, those are symphyses, um, as is 
um, the connection between the two pubic bones and the front in that arch there um, that is also a symphysis. Um, so that's our fibrous and cartilaginous joints. Um, if we look at synovial joints, um, their kind of key feature is the fact that they have this fluid-filled space, this fluid-filled cavity that we call a synovial cavity um, between the, the ends of the bones. Um, and so essentially the reason we have this cavity or the purpose of the cavity really is that it helps reduce the friction. Um, almost all of the limb bones are synovial joints. Um, and so most of our movement is given to us um, by these synovial joints. They are all diarthrotic, meaning they're freely movable. Um, and because they all have this kind of fluid filled joint cavity, um, it's very helpful in terms of reducing the amount of friction um, that we see as we move. Um, the synovial cavity itself um, has a little, what we call articular capsule around it. It has two layers. It has a fibrous outer layer of dense irregular connective tissue, and then this inner synovial membrane, um, which is what actually makes the synovial fluid, um, that's the fluid that's inside this cavity here. Um, it's actually um, a filtrate of your blood plasma, um, plus a substance called hyaluronic acid, um, which is this kind of watery um, kind of ground substance. Um, again, the whole purpose of the fluid is to kind of nourish and lubricate the joint. Um, and it, there's also a lot of phagocytic cells um, that can um, kind of chip away um, and any debris and kind of recycle it and debride the articular cartilage um, so that the articular cartilage stays nice and healthy. The articular cartilage itself is, of course, hyaline cartilage, makes a nice smooth surface um, for the ends of our bones that meet together. Um, it also prevents the as bone ends from kind of being crushed um, by their connection. Um, uh, almost all of our um, joints, and actually no matter what type they are, will have some sort of ligaments. Um, you'll see um, several ligaments as we look at the joint models um, in class. Um, ligaments are dense regular connective tissue, so um, they're, they're really good tensile strength in one direction. Um, and really what they're trying to do there with the ligaments is kind of restrict the motion of the joints, provide a little bit of stability. Um, your joints also contain nerves and blood vessels, although you don't see them here in this image. Um, of course, the nerves are um, responsible for the pain um, sensation. They also kind of monitor our joint position and our kind of stretch of our joints um, so that we don't kind of overstretch them. Um, of course, blood vessels are bringing um, oxygen and nutrients, um, so and then serves as, again, the basis of that synovial fluid. Um, so you want to be able to um, answer some questions and kind of describe kind of the basic um, kind of general features about the synovial joints. Um, and then you want to um, be able to identify all of the different bones that come together in all of these different types of synovial joints um, and then what type they happen to be. Um, because there are actually um, six different types of synovial joints, as we'll see here in just a second. Um, so because uh, the synovial joints are the ones that we have the most of, we are going to spend more time talking about them. Um, in terms of friction reduction, we've got the synovial fluid, we've got the articular cartilage, and we saw that in the previous slide, but then we also have what we call tendon sheaths and bursae. And bursa are essentially like a sac, uh, almost a water balloon, kind of shoved in and amongst um, all of the joints. You can see there's a lot of ligaments here, there's a lot of muscle tendons, um, and it is kind of fibrous tissue. And if that fibrous tissue were, rub were to rub together, um, that would create a lot of friction. But if we kind of stick these little water balloons um, kind of in and amongst all of that fibrous tissue, that's a nice kind of friction reducing type of structure. We also have tendon sheaths, which are essentially just like the bursa, except they're longer and they're wrapped around the tendons of our muscles. So in this instance here, we're looking at um, the tendon of one of the biceps muscles. Um, and since we do have a lot of kind of muscles here um, attaching and, and kind of crossing over these joints, um, again, there we want these kind of smooth surfaces um, so that we're not creating a lot of friction. Um, in terms of 
stability in our joints. Um, a, a small role is played by the, the shape of the, the bone ends that are coming together, our articular surfaces. Um, if you've got a really deep socket, um, that is probably more uh, stable than something with a more shallow socket. Um, of course, all of these ligaments are a major stabilizing factor. Um, if you've got more ligaments, that joint is likely to be more stable than one that is not, um, or that doesn't have a lot of ligaments. Um, but the biggest stabilizing factor in terms of our synovial joints is actually muscle tone. Um, so your muscles are kind of in this constant state of kind of semi-contraction, um, and that pulls the tendons taut, um, and that really helps stabilize our joints, particularly in our limbs. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there are six different types of synovial joints, and you can see they have very different shapes in terms of their articular surfaces. Um, plane joints are essentially two flat surfaces. They are considered a non-axial joint in terms of their range of motion. Um, and essentially what we're looking at are the intercarpal joints here. Um, and as you move your wrist, it allows the carpals to just kind of slide past one another. Um, we have hinge joints like we see here between the trochlear notch of the ulna and the trochlea on the humerus. Um, so imagine like a door hinge, right? So we're opening and closing the door. So we're moving in one direction. That's considered uniaxial in terms of range of motion. Uh, pivot joints are also uniaxial. We have the head of the um, radius here in the um, notch uh, on the ulna and uh, essentially with the ligament wrapped around it, it allows the um, radius to kind of pivot um, across the ulna um, when you move your forearm. Um, we also have what we call condylar joints. Condylar joints are essentially this slightly convex surface with a slightly concave surface, very rounded surfaces. Um, and condylar joints are considered biaxial in terms of their range of motion, meaning they're not just moving in one plane, but they're actually moving along two body planes. Uh, saddle joints uh, are really convex and concave surfaces. Um, if you imagine the con, um, convex surface is basically a saddle, um, and then, you, know, you put your legs over the saddle. Um, very, very, very wide range of motion, um, also biaxial. Um, the thumb here um, between uh, metacarpal one here and the carpals of the thumb uh, is a saddle joint. Um, so that's why our thumbs are more movable than all of our other fing fingers. Um, we have opposable thumbs, meaning you can touch your thumb to all of your other fingers. You can't really do that with the other fingers. Um, the most kind of um, widest in terms of range of motion of the synovial joints are the ball and socket joints, like here at the shoulder and then also the hip. Um, so you've got this kind of rounded kind of ball right into this kind of cup-like socket. And ball and socket joints are considered multi-axial, um, meaning that they can not just move in one body plane or two body planes, they can actually move in more than two. So they can move um, along three body planes. So you want to be able to um, identify different joints of the body um, and then kind of tell me a little bit about what type of joint they might be, um, kind of what type of movement they might be able to do, what is their range of motion. Um, in terms of uh, movements, um, we have what we call angular movements, which is things like flexion, extension, abduction and adduction. Um, so flexion decreases the angle between a joint, extension increases the angle between a joint, and of course if you hyperflex or hyperextend you're kind of going beyond um, like a, a normal type of um, right, just going a little further in terms of the flexion or extension. Um, so you can see flexion here, extension here, and then if you look up at the ceiling that would actually be hyperextension and the same thing here, flexion, extension, and then if you went and did a back bend, that would be hyperextension. Um, we can also um, flex our and extend our knees. We can flex and extend our arms. Um, you can flex and extend your elbow joint. Um, you can 
um, flex and extend lots of different joints. You can flex and extend your hip joint. Um, so there are lots of different joints that you can flex and extend. Um, if we look at abduction and adduction, abduction is uh, away from the middle of the body. Um, so you're going up, imagine you're doing a jumping a jack, and adduction is moving back in towards the body, um, towards the, kind of the midline of the body, so you're adding them back in. Uh, circumduction is actually a motion that con combines both abduction and adduction and flexion and extension, and it's essentially describing a circle in space. Um, so for a joint to be able to circumduct, um, it has to be a biaxial joint that can flex, extend, and abduct, and adduct. Um, and then we have rotation. Um, we have lateral rotation, um, meaning we're turning laterally, like right, right towards the uh, lateral side of the body. And then we have medial rotation, um, meaning we're turning back in um, towards the, the medial part of the body. So the easiest way to think of that is if you're staring straight ahead and you then turn your head so that you can look at um, the wall um, to the side, that would be lateral rotation. And then if you came back so that and moved your head so that you were looking straight ahead again, that would then be medial rotation. Um, then we also have a couple of really special movements, um, particularly of the ankle and the foot um, and the forearm. Um, so in pronation and supination, we're talking about um, moving the proximal radial ulnar joint. Um, when you are um, in a pronated position, um, the radius essentially rotates over the ulna. When you're in a supinated position, which is what you are in when you are in an anatomical position, the radius and the ulna are parallel. Um, the foot does not flex and extend. It actually dorsiflexes and plantar flexes. So if you were to take your toes and point them at the ceiling, that would be dorsiflexion. If you were to take your toes and kind of point them downward or even go to stand up on your tippy toes, that would be plantar flexion. Um, and then in terms of inversion and eversion at the ankle, uh, inversion is um, taking the sole of the foot and turning it in. Shocker, right? Inversion. And eversion is taking the sole of the foot and turning it outward. Um, so there's a couple special movements um, that are specific to the foot, ankle, and forearm. Whereas, if we go back here for just a second, um, rotation and abduction and adduction and flexion and extension, um, there are lots of joints that do those kinds of motions. Um, so that's kind of general um, information about um, all of our joints. We're also going to um, look at, um, well, four really, right? Four, the hip, the knee, the shoulder, the, el the elbow, excuse me, and the TMJ. So five really. Um, we're gonna look at five um, kind of select synovial joints um, that'll allow us to get into a little bit more detail uh, about um, some of these different joints. That will be in um, kind of part two of this lecture.